The British government today have officially removed the independence of our courts in looking at our past. And make no mistake about the human impact that this has. Because on a day like today, we could easily fall into the trap of talking about the legalities and the mechanisms and the best way of dealing with our past. But for me, the most important part of today is the fact that this has been absolutely devastating for families, for loved ones, and for multiple generations of families who have simply asked a question, why was my loved one killed? How were they killed? And demand in truth and demand in justice. The reason why the British government are here today has been there in plain sight. They haven't even attempted to hide this. They have made it clear that this is about protection and protection of their agents, of their workers, of their systems that they had in place. And as I say, they make no secret about that whatsoever. They have as much interest in the families who are here today, families right across these islands, as they had in the loved ones whose lives they took or certainly they were culpable in taking. Because as our courts have shown, as the independent bodies have shown time and time again, case after case, investigation after investigation, the British state's hand was there in plain sight in relation to hundreds and hundreds of killings over the course of our conflict. And as I talk here today, we know that we live in a world where the people of Gaza are being slaughtered on a daily basis. Now more than ever, we need countries to make a commitment to the principles of democracy, the principles of truth and justice and law and order. And the British government are showing their intent today as they fly in the face of natural order, of natural justice, and they say to our courts that they have no rule, that they say to the families there shall be no independent voice or analysis as we look into our past. But make no mistake, this is not at the end of the road for the families today. Families who are standing beside me today, my own family included, and families right across these islands, are well used to having obstacles put in place by the British government over numerous decades. They are used to standing against the might of a British state. But what they do have, which is what the British government don't have and will never have, is that they have right on their side. They have the solidarity of everybody standing together. They have international opinion. They have every single political party outside of the Conservative Party in England on their side. So if today is the end, it's the end of the fact that this legislation will not be here for much longer. It's already been tested in our domestic courts and has been shown to be flawed. We await the outcome of the intergovernment, or the intergovernment state case taken by the Irish government and all international independent legal analysis calls this legislation for what it is, a sham, a delayed tactic, an attempt to tell families that they do not deserve truth and justice, an attempt to tell families that their loved ones are not worth the effort of our court's investigation. Well, we stand here today and we say no. We say that we will not accept this and we say that we demand truth and justice. We await to see whether a British Labour government, if they are elected in the next election, stand by their commitment to repeal this legislation because our voice since this legislation has been announced is one that has not been ignored or has not been dismissed because we do have power in our collective voice. And so the message from here today is that we are not going away. We are not giving up. Every single one of our loved ones deserves nothing less. And we will continue to fight for truth and fight for justice. Go to Melbourne.